everybody, I'm Lori Hughes and um, I am so excited to share one of our favorite recipes with you for soup and it's the chicken and sweet potato stew. So this uh, recipe is actually from a cookbook of mine, um, but I'm modifying it a little bit. So it's not exactly the same, um, but it's, a, it's a, a healthy recipe. And there are some uh, different things that you can do to modify this if you want to, if you don't like sweet potatoes, or maybe you want to try a different protein, you can do steak, um, you can do really just about anything. But this is a very filling um, one pot dish. And uh, so I'm going to be using a, a Dutch oven to cook it in um, because the, the thing about sweet potatoes is they sometimes can take a little while to cook. Um, the, the actual cooking time on this is probably about half an hour. Um, so. I'm going to show you some of the things that um, this recipe calls for and some of the modifications that, that I make for, for our family. Um, so it, it calls for a pound of skinless um, chicken thighs. Um, chicken thighs are, are really, really tasty. They have a lot of flavor, but um, I happen to have chicken breasts on hand, so I am using um, a pound of chicken tenderloins, actually, um, that you cut up into um, about two inch chunks. And uh, so I've done a lot of the prepping of all the vegetables um, already, so I'm just gonna kinda show them here. Um, it also calls for about a half a teaspoon of salt and a half, a, excuse me, a quarter teaspoon of black pepper. So I did, went ahead and uh, mixed the black pepper and salt with the chicken here in a little um, zipper bag. So it's just um, a really good way to get that coated. It calls for two teaspoons of canola oil. This is actually two and a half because I find that sometimes I need a little bit extra. Um, you can use olive oil as well. Um, I've used that. Uh, and then it calls for a pound or one head of cabbage. So whatever that head of cabbage, this happened to be a pretty large one. Um, it ended up taking an extra extra bag there, but this is, this is um, a, a head of cabbage and I just took the heart of it off and shredded it. Um, just diced it up in pretty, pretty bite-sized little pieces. Um, the other thing it calls for are two garlic cloves, um, and we're gonna mince these in just a little bit. Um, and then two sweet potatoes, and it just depends on, you know, if you want a small potato or medium potato. Uh, roughly, you're gonna get about, um, I would say maybe a cup to a cup and a half, maybe almost two cups of chopped sweet, sweet potato. Again, you can use regular potatoes. Yukon Gold are really nice um, for something like this if you don't care for the taste of sweet potatoes. Um, you could also uh, use butternut squash. Butternut squash is a great substitute um, for potatoes if you're trying to avoid some starches. Um, but the, the, uh, the sweet potato gives it a really nice um, kind of a roasted flavor. Um, we're gonna use one and a quarter cup of chicken broth. I actually made more. Um, I made about two and a half cups of chicken broth. Um, I like to make my own chicken broth. I use um, a, a better than, than a bouillon, and it's this is the chicken flavor. Um, I find that it takes just a, maybe a teaspoon and a half to two teaspoons um, of that to some hot water. And uh, like I said, I like, I just like the flavor. It gives it a really nice, um, almost a chicken soup <laughs> kind of texture flavor. Um, so I just, I like it. So I, I brought some of that. And then um, later we'll use about three quarter to a quarter cup of water. This is dependent upon how um, soupy or thick you want your, your soup to be, uh, stew to be. Um, you know, I, I tend to like a little more liquid and as it cooks out, um, just more flavorful. Something this recipe calls for in the cookbook is a cup of frozen peas. Well, I didn't have that. So um, we're not actually going to use um, frozen peas in this, but you could add maybe a little extra veggie if you wanted to. Um, also we're going to use about a cup of um, uh, onion. Um, this happened to be a pretty large onion, so I used the whole thing and just um, sliced it. It says thinly sliced, um, so that's what I did. Um, well, it also calls for a tablespoon of thyme, um, fresh thyme. I don't have any fresh thyme, um, but and actually I didn't bring my spice either, so I'm probably going to leave that out. Um, but if you have like a um, maybe some other kind of savory spice, um, you can throw that in. 
and then later we'll use a couple tablespoons of um, all-purpose flour um, and that's just going to thicken our stew so you can avoid if you, if you, you know going gluten-free you definitely don't need the flour um, it's just a thickener so you can use something else if you prefer so I am um, cooking the chicken I've got it kind of high well it's about a it's about a medium high Turn it down a little bit. This Dutch oven can sometimes take a little while to warm up, but once it's warm, it is great. Um, so I set the timer here for six minutes, and I'm just kind of stirring it around a little bit here and there to get it um, cooked a little bit. And again, you're not going to have to worry too much about cooking it thoroughly at this stage because you are going to put it back in a little bit later with the vegetables and the broth and everything, and it's going to continue to cook. As you um, as you do this, so um, it may not take you the full six minutes. You may just, you know, depending on how high you have your stove top set. But um, but I leave the cover off of this, um, and then we're going to transfer it in a little bit to a to a bowl here um, and set it aside <clears throat> before we add some more oil to the pot and add our other vegetables. Smelling really good. Now, this is one of those things where you could you could prep your veggies a day in advance if you're kind of in a hurry and you just want to spend the time, you know, letting the Dutch oven do its thing. Um, you could also probably make this in a quick cooker um, if you have one of those, like an instant pot or um, pressure cooker of some sort. Um, I would probably recommend if you do that just to um, maybe saute the chicken before you um, pressurize anything. Um, probably also I would recommend uh, sauteing with it the, the um, garlic and the onion all at the same time uh, rather than what I'm doing here which is sort of keeping it separate a little bit. Um, just to really focus here on the chicken itself. Um, the If you use a, a pressure cooker, you probably don't want to keep the cabbage in there that long because cabbage itself does not take that long in a pressure cooker. Um, but what you really want to focus on are the sweet potatoes and the chicken, and making sure that those are nicely tender. And then you could add the cabbage in toward the end of your cooking cycle if you want to do that. So, just another option. So we've got about two minutes left on this chicken here to uh, to cook and again I'm just stirring it a little bit. I have a, um, I'm, I'm actually working here from the church but um, I have a, a gas oven at home and um, stove top so it's it's always a little different when you use electric or go from electric to gas so um, you know you always think it's um, not as high or it's higher than it should be so this is cooking up pretty pretty quickly um, in fact I'm probably gonna go ahead and turn the timer off at one minute left and I'm gonna go ahead and pull this off out of there because we're gonna keep that nice and hot to get our veggies going It would seem logical that you would want to put the um, sweet potatoes in next, um, but you actually don't yet. So not until you've cooked down the uh, the onion and, and garlic a little bit. So to make sure I get all the little chicken bits out of there, and even if you leave some in there, that's okay. Okay. All right. So we're gonna <clears throat> put the rest of our oil in there. And go ahead and I um, minced my garlic up and put it on top of the onion. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and add. And you know what? I may have made too much cabbage. The thing about cabbage though is it does cook down um, as it cooks. So um, let's see, I think that's enough cabbage. I don't wanna oops, go over go over too much. 
so the, <clears throat> the recipe calls for us to cover this and then cook for about eight minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and set the timer for six minutes and we'll, um, we'll check it. But for now, I kinda wanna stir it up a little bit and make sure it's not gonna burn. But this, as those onions cook with this cabbage, it is going to really be flavorful. You're also probably tempted to add a little water or something to this, and you, I guess you could, just to steam it a little bit while it's cooking. Um, but there is a lot of natural water in cabbage. And that garlic is coming through and it's starting to really smell good. But I think the idea here is just sort of get it mixed up and I'm gonna go ahead now and cover it like it says. For about five more minutes here. It says to stir occasionally until the cabbage and the onion are just tender. I've been kind of checking this periodically, just stirring it around. I just don't want it to burn. And uh, it's actually got a nice golden color to those onions, so that's perfect. So we're gonna go ahead and add the broth. And like I said, I had a little extra water in there anyway. Um, so I'm not gonna add more water to this. Um, and I have taken the chicken um, from before and added the sweet potatoes to it. So I'm going to just add this to our rock crock, as I call it here, Dutch oven. And we're going to give that a, another good stir. And we're going to set the timer again. This says to, um, to let it come to a boil um, with the lid off. Um, so you kind of keep that heat. I'm gonna turn it up just a little bit and um, get this combined here real well so it's nice and even. This is smelling really good. Um, if, if you wanted to add some additional seasonings, now's a good time to do that. You could put in some um, Greek seasoning if you want. I use that a lot. Um, it did call for thyme, which I don't have, but you could put um, even rosemary, I think would be really nice with the chicken and sweet potatoes. Um, you could add a little more salt and pepper. I'm not adding more salt um, to this because the broth that I use has quite a bit of sodium in it. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and wait to set the timer until this is boiling. Um, shouldn't take too, too long. The nice thing about the Dutch oven here is it stays nice and warm. Didn't cool off too much. When you put cold things in here, it takes a little bit, but it's, it's gonna keep it nice. So we're gonna wait for that to kind of boil um, a little bit. Um, once it boils, then we're gonna cover it. <clears throat> and we're gonna let that cook. Um, until all those vegetables are tender and that chicken's cooked thoroughly, uh, which is about 20 minutes. And uh, at that point, after we do that, you could stir in your um, peas if you have them. Um, I don't have them, so we're just gonna call it done at that point. So it is now cooked for 20 minutes. You can see it's still kind of bubbling here, but um, I believe it's done. I tested the uh, sweet potato a little bit with my spoon and it, it's uh, very tender. Um, so if you, if you want your sweet potatoes a little bit more tender, you can. You just want to be careful you don't turn it into mush with the cabbage. <laughs> so um, I think 20 minutes is perfect and it smells really good and tasty and um, pretty much one pot is all you you need to wash. So I hope y'all enjoyed it. Look forward to uh, soup with everybody when we come back again um, but this is this is a great way to stay connected so enjoy